Hello! I'd like to show an Excel project that I just wrapped up recently. And first of all, kudos to the client and to the previous programmer who got it to the point it was at when I came on board. Uh, the previous programmer got tied up, so uh, I, they brought me in. And I took over from where they left off, and it was a great foundation they left for me to build on. Uh, so thanks to both for that. Uh, this is a... Uh, cost estimate tool built in Excel and the client had a couple of very unique requests and the first one was in these yellow cells the quantity cells that are that are lit up yellow that need uh, some sort of number value input in certain cases they wanted to base the value on a calculation. Now, we're not talking a simple formula. We're not talking a VLOOKUP from some other sheet. They wanted to base these values on a list of line items that when, when calculated would derive the final value that would get inserted in the cell. And not only that, they wanted to go back to those line items if they, if they could and make updates and edits to them and then have the final value update itself when that was complete. Uh, it was it was a very interesting task, a very, very challenging little project. Um, and this is what we came up with. So if we right click on any of these yellow cells, we get a user form that will do exactly what they want. Uh, so in this form, uh, we use the bottom data entry part to build our line items. And I'll th go through one very quickly. To show how this works okay we're going to add adds to the list now we can select and duplicate if all the values are close to the next line we want to build we can we can do that uh, two two going to add that we can also go up select the line and edit it if we need to make a change to a certain line and we'll update that uh, let's add one more so three uh, five, 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 eight, yep, okay, 58, eight, and two. Okay, and we can see as we go, uh, the this, this line total calculation uh, happens automatically, and once everything's added to the list in the top, the grand total uh, shows up here. So once we hit okay, Okay, that final value is inserted in the cell. Now the line items are stored on a separate hidden sheet um, so they can be recalled. And they are aware of what cell they are referencing. Uh, you'll see a note gets inserted into the cell that there's underlying data for this. So they know this isn't just a typed in value or a formula. So if they right click on the cell, it brings up the lines that built that final value. And they can go ahead and make edits to these. It's the lead line. The final value is updated. We hit OK. And it's updated here. They can go back in and make as many edits or updates as, as they like. And always come back to the calculation and, and update it. Okay, they can also by just deleting the value in the cell, it's gonna prompt them. It's saying there's underlying data that, that makes this calculation up. And do you wanna remove that background data or do you wanna keep it? And we're gonna remove it so that we don't accumulate trash data in the background, taking up space on a hidden sheet somewhere. So that was the first uh, task they had. The second task was a little more complex and uh, a little more interesting. And, and again, just great fun building out. So on these, on this sheet, uh, we have uh, everything's broken out by division. Under division, we have these phase codes and then subcodes. And they want to be able to customize all the way down the sheet throughout all the divisions and all the codes. They want to be able to customize by inserting uh, new phase codes uh, that may pop up in their estimate uh, that they would need. And previously they could do this one code at a time. They wanted to be able to insert multiple codes at a time across multiple divisions running down the sheet. So we built that out. So if we double click on a green plus, we get the insert phase code form. Now by default, it comes up as division zero because that's the plus sign we used. If we had used the one down here at 1.1, this would have defaulted to 1.1. 1 .1. 
it currently lists all the codes that are that are in division zero uh, out here on the sheet. Uh, over here is the master list. This is every code they could possibly use. Anything grayed out is already used on the sheet somewhere. Anything uh, still in black is not used and is available to be used. So we're going to build up division zero a little bit. We're going to select some of these available codes and we're going to add them to the list. Now they insert in order where they belong and they build up a total queue. This is where all of the codes that will eventually be inserted into the sheet are going to pile up. So we'll go down to another division. Let's add some more. Okay. Um, if they have a, a description of, an, of a code in their head, but they're not sure what it was called or, or what the number was, they can go into a search feature and let's look for wood items. Oh, there it is, wood panels. We'll add that. They can reset and it searches across the phase code field as well. So if they're looking for say an 07 code, it'll show all the 07 codes or anything that actually has 07 in the description, but we'll go with the uh, weather barriers. Okay, we're building up quite a list down here. We have nine codes already. Now, in the case that they need a custom code, there's something that's not covered in their master list and they wanna build their own code for it, they can enter that down here in the custom code area. The code has to be six digits, including two trailing zeros. Uh, anything besides that, we'll get them an error message and it won't go in. So let's adhere to the rules. Then we can put it in a description, new code, and we can add that to the list also. And custom codes go in as blue to highlight them as custom, not part of the, of the standard code list. Uh, we'll go up, change division. Let's put one more in. New code. And we'll add that. Now what they can't do is they can't add a code that already exists. So 01, 00, uh, we'll go with this. 01, 04, 00, 01, 04, 00. It, it scans the list, sees it already exists, and they can't use that. So it'll prevent them from, from putting in codes. Uh, if they make a mistake, select the wrong code, and they want to pull that back out, uh, they can do that. Let's go down here, wood panels, let's bring that back out. That wasn't the one we wanted. So that is removed from all the lists. We have now built up our total queue and we want to insert that into the sheet into the divisions we've selected. And you'll see here, this includes division zero, get these two, division 1.1, we'll get these, and division 1.2, we'll get this one at the bottom. So once we hit insert, it'll start putting them into the underlying sheet and you'll get some progress monitoring down here. You'll get a progress bar and some text showing you what code it's working on. And the total queue will update at each code that is inserted. Okay, codes have been inserted. And you can see anything with this yellow subcode waiting to be populated is one of the new codes that were put in. Down here, there are all the ones that we put in for 1.1 and there is the custom code we put in for 1.2. So that was a really, really great project. Building that form out, sketching out, you know, how it was going to work and being in constant contact with the client uh, to decide what they wanted it to do, not do, look like, not look like, um, and really nail down all the rules uh, for how it worked. So those were two really interesting user forms I built in Excel using VBA. And it was just a great project, absolutely thrilled with it. Kind of sad that it's over, um, but I believe there's more work coming, so that's exciting as well. Uh, thank you for your time, and have a great day.